I want to start talking about spin along some general direction, n hat. And in a separate video, we'll set up what the operator is. This is going to be to talk in general about what it is and what the coordinate is. So, so far, we focused on spin in the z direction. That's our typical measurement. But we've also talked about measuring in the x direction and measuring in the y direction. And actually, there's nothing special. We just pick some direction and call that x. We pick some direction and call that y. We pick some direction and call that z. So you can imagine taking this and turning the whole thing, and that shouldn't change our physics, right? In the real world, gravity tells us something about up and down. Gravity hasn't factored into any of this. So it has been completely arbitrary what direction we call x, y, and z. So what this means is we should be able to develop a model for spin in some general direction, and then actually measure that and have our basis states and everything that we've done so far. So one thing here is that we have to work in effectively uh, spherical coordinates, or at least there's just a way of representing this. So one thing to note is that x is kind of the one coming out of the, the board at you. y is here, z is up. So you can always check and do x cross y should give you z to make sure you've drawn a right-handed coordinate system. The definition I'm using here matches the book. One thing to be careful about is that I think in some math textbooks, the angular definitions are, are opposite, and I'm sure that there's some physics textbooks that use a different convention. So phi is going to be our angle with respect to the x direction, and then theta is our angle with respect to z. So z this n hat is then some random direction, and we're going to just think about a direction. So it's a unit vector. It has length 1. And what these dashed lines are trying to do is project it downwards. So what that means is this is going straight down parallel to z, and so this point here represents a point in the y-x plane. And so this is the angle that it's making with respect to x, this is the angle it's making with respect to z. It's really hard to draw this two-dimensionally. Um, the colors may or may not help, this looks really similar to what's in the book. If you struggle to see this, think about actually, you know, using some um, pencils or something to try to work it out in, in three dimensions. So when we do this out, and I've already written this out, um, this should look like converting from Cartesian to spherical, except the fact that there's, um, or vice versa, except for the fact that there's overall not a radius term. So this is just the unit vector in the x direction, unit vector in the y direction, unit vector in z. So careful, this isn't square root of negative 1 here. So I'll often use the notation of just calling this x hat, y hat, um, z hat to not just have so many different letters floating around. So to do a quick check and say, does this make sense? Well, if theta was 0, that would mean that we are straight up in the z direction. And so if theta is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So this term is 1. We have k hat, so z. Sine theta, sine theta, sine of 0 is 0. These terms drop out. So that checks out. Then we look at phi. So if phi is 0, this term is 1. And if theta was, say, 90 degrees or pi over 2, this term is 1. So n hat then becomes x hat. Sine of 90 is still 1. but sine of 0 then is 0, and then cosine of 90 is 0. So these terms would drop out if theta was, equ oh, sorry, if theta was equal to 90, or pi over 2, and phi was equal to 0. So you should be able to prove to yourself by using the three simplifying cases of being on one of our Cartesian directions to see that this works. So, and this is something that, again, you should either be able to kind of derive from first principles or know where you can look it up. Um, you know, in my class, I don't ask you to memorize a lot of formulas. This is something that I would get to by actually doing that check. I know roughly the form it has, and then I, if I just happen to forget which ones have sines and cosines, I would check by drawing this and going through those special cases. So then, if we want to measure the direction, the spin direction in N, what we actually do is take the dot product of S with n. And there's a few different ways to think about this, but we've set up here what n is, and then the next thing is to say, well, what is, what is this going to be? And we can actually think about this as our three spin matrices, and then so representing x, y, and z. So we can even write this as, for instance, a 
sum of SI, where these are our spin matrices, NI, where those are our three directions, so just an, an inner product. So since this is just taken a little bit to set up, I'll go through in a different video actually understanding how we go through this, because once we have this operator, we could then find what our eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. And why would you do this? Well, if you actually want to find, well, what's the spin if we now tilt our magnet 30 degrees or something, you would actually have concrete values in here for theta and phi. We can derive it in general and then later plug in specific values.